Hello and welcome to Time to Talk History. Today we're going to talk about why there was a succession crisis in England in 1066. The succession crisis began with the death of this man, Edward the Confessor. He had ruled England since 1042 and he died on the 5th of January 1066. You may be thinking there isn't much unusual about a king dying, and indeed he was the seventh king of England to have done so already in the 11th century. But the death of Edward in 1066 sparked a succession crisis in England for four main reasons. Firstly, there was no go-to choice of a direct male heir, because Edward the Confessor had no children. This may have been through choice. He didn't want to have a child with his wife, Edith of Wessex, because she was the daughter of Earl Godwin, who had allegedly been involved in the capture and murder of Edward's brother, called Alfred, in 1036-37. It may have been because of his piety. He had spent the last years of his life devoted to the rebuilding of Westminster Abbey, and he was later canonised in 1161. Or, most likely, it was because of some misfortune of biology. Either he or Edith was simply unable to have children. Secondly, a crisis over the succession was nothing new in 11th century England. We're going to need a bigger board for this. Okay, Ethelred II, of unready fame, had been chased out of England by Swain Forkbeard in December 1013, and he managed to reign for six weeks before dying. Ethelred came back, only to discover Swain's son Canute thought he should be king, and he was willing to get fighty. Ethelred died partway through the invasion, and his son, Edmund Ironside, was chosen as king. He and Canute fought one another to a standstill until betrayal by Edric Striona led to defeat for Edmund at the Battle of Assenden on the 18th of October 1016. Edmund and Canute then shared the throne for just over a month, until Edmund died on November the 30th, and Canute settled down to establishing a North Sea Empire, also becoming King of Denmark in 1018 and King of Norway in 1028. All seemed settled until Canute died on the 12th of November 1035, and his two sons, Arthur Canute and Harold vied for the throne. Their rivalry came from having different mothers, and it being unclear which marriage took precedence for the succession. Added to this, rumours went around that Harold wasn't really the son of Canute. Nevertheless, Harold had the advantage, as he was in England at the time of Canute's death, whilst Arthur Canute was tied down in Denmark, establishing himself as king there. By the time Arthur Canute had things sorted and was preparing to invade, Harold did everyone a favour and avoided a war by dying on the 17th of March 1040, and Harthacnut travelled to England to become king. This time everything was settled, except for the fact that Harthacnut muddied the waters by both making an agreement in 1039 to let Magnus of Norway become his heir after his death, and then in 1041 inviting Edward the Confessor to England to become his heir as well. Arthur Canute then took too close an interest in the drinks at a wedding reception on the 8th of June 1042 and died of a stroke as a result. This allowed Edward the Confessor to become king, helped by the fact that Magnus of Norway was distracted by trying to secure his power as king of Denmark against the challenge of Swain Estrithson, Canute's nephew. So, Ethelred Swain, Ethelred Edmund, Canute, Harold, Arthur Canute, Edward. It's perhaps easy to see why people might think that the English throne was up for grabs in the 11th century. Thirdly, having learned absolutely nothing from his predecessors, Edward the Confessor proceeded to not only fail to have a direct legitimate heir, as mentioned earlier, but also to change his mind repeatedly over who he wanted to succeed him as king. Sometime in 1051-52, Edward offered to make William of Normandy his heir, Accounts of this don't all tell the same story, but both English sources and Norman sources mention some sort of an agreement, suggesting some discussion must have taken place. In 1054, Edward sent Bishop Eildred of Worcester to Europe in search of his long-lost nephew, Edward the Exile, and bring him to England. He was the son of Edmund Ironside, who was Edward the Confessor's half-brother. Edward the Exile arrived in England in 1057, but promptly died. The son of Edward the Exile, Edgar the Etheling, who was Edward the Confessor's great-nephew, was then the closest living relative of Edward the Confessor, and possibly the next choice to be king. If this was the plan, Edward the Confessor had a last-minute change of heart, 
and instead promised the throne to Harold Godwinson, the brother of his wife, Edith, as he lay dying in January 1066. Finally over in Norway, Harald Hardrada had become king in 1047. He was the uncle of Magnus of Norway, and as Magnus's heir, arguably also inherited the promise made by Harthacute to Magnus, back in 1039, that he should be the next king of England. So, we have four possible promises having been made by the time of Edward the Confessor's death. We'll talk about the relative strengths of these claims in a future episode. The fourth and final reason why there was a succession crisis in 1066 was that three of these men were in a position to press their claims. William of Normandy, Harold Godwinson and Harold Hardrada were all powerful men and they were all willing to stake money and lives on becoming the next King of England. So there were four main reasons why Edward the Confessor's death started a succession crisis. He had no direct male heir, succession crises were nothing new in England, there had been too many promises made about the throne during Edward's lifetime, and three of those men who believed they had been promised the throne were willing to fight for it. Thank you for watching this episode of Time to Talk History, and I hope you'll join me again to talk some more history in the future. Goodbye for now, and take care.